Well, we're here talking to Shelley Sikun. Uh, Shelley works for Shell, mm -hmm. uh, you know, on an environmental project. Uh, you know, um, Shell International. Prior to that, you were with Shell Brunei. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we will not go there first. Uh, I, I wanna. I want to share with you uh, how you made an impression on me. Okay. So, uh, two weeks ago we met mm -hmm. at a Global Shaper meeting. Correct. And then we had small talks. And then you talk about uh, one of the courses that you attended. Uh, and then you show me the app. And then, you know, you say, hey, I'm studying or I've studied positive psychology. So. I say, what is it? And then you told me, you say, assume if I just got promoted, or I, yeah, assume if I just got promoted and I've just told you, you know, what would you say? Mm. I say, congratulations, you know, well done. Yeah. And then we move on. You stop me. And then you say, um, I thought that I was being positive. Mm. What do you say next? I said that was very passive. And I shared with you one of the key learnings from me, which is uh, ACR, active, constructive response. Yeah, I was taken aback because I was being positive yeah, yeah. by congratulating you. Yeah, yeah. Which, is what, which is what I do, right? If somebody tells me yes. uh, I got promoted, great job, wow, amazing. And then we move on. Yeah, and then we move on. Yes, please continue. Yeah. So there's no empathy in it. Uh -huh. If you think about the response, yep. it's very much... It hit you, you responded, you didn't right. really think about it. Uh -huh. when so you're not emerged in that situation no, no. as opposed to a wife or you know, a mom and dad would do because yes. you are invested in the person. Correct. So what are the three terms you say? It was ACR, so active constructive uh, response. Right. And the whole idea behind it is that um, when someone has gone through an experience, a positive experience, what you should do as the person listening or responding is you should go there with them. I thought it's very important yeah. because we don't do that enough yeah. or at all. Yeah. I remember your response to me was um, beyond congratulations, you actually went deep. You know, what is the role? Yeah. So can, it, can you remember what yeah. exactly, how exactly you would, you, would, um, you would tackle this situation? Yeah, so I said, um, so it, it, it was you, hypothetical situation, you yeah. got promoted. Oh, great, Sean. So where were you when your boss congratulated you? And so it brings you back to that moment when your boss said to you congratulations. Uh -huh. And then the conversation goes to, so what were some of the strengths that he said you had? Uh -huh. uh, what was it that made you get the promotion? Yep. How did it make you feel? Uh -huh. And how do you think you can take some of the compliments that you got into uh, whatever yeah, other, yeah, your other pursuits that you have outside? Uh -huh. so, you see, what really is so powerful about what you've just uttered is a lot of times, these are the things that someone who is, uh, you know, who's just got the promotion, you know, is waiting to express. Yeah. But no one ever asks. No one ever asks. Yeah, it's like, it's very awkward. Yeah. You know, if I just come to you, I got promoted and blurt it all out. Mm. Some people do that. Yeah. We call them women. Yeah. <laughs> My wife would do, yeah. do that, right? <laughs> hey, sexist remark. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but most of us, you know, would write a diary. Or, or blog, <laughs> or yeah, or, or just let that feeling, uh, you know, sweep away uh, without really celebrating it. Mm. So, what is positive psychology? Um, so, a lot of what I do nowadays is because I've got a three-year-old, right? I try to, you know, be the best version of myself for mm -hmm. him. So, positive psychology was me. One is because I want to be a life coach, right? Mm -hmm. Secondly, is because I've got a three-year-old. How do I set him up for success in the future, right? So it's all about well-being. Mm -hmm. It's focusing on your strengths rather than your weaknesses. Mm -hmm. It's about resilience. It's about gratitude. It's about compassion. Mm -hmm. I think from a day-to-day -day perspective, you always look at things that went wrong. It's easier to, fi to fixate on what went wrong rather mm -hmm. than what went right. Mm -hmm. So one of the modules that it talks about is called constructive journalism, mm -hmm. where journalists tend to interview from an angle of, you're the victim. And I'm going to ask you very victim-based questions right. when they say that, you know, journalism should really think about more solution-focused questions. Right. So it's just, I'm not a journalist, but I felt, wow, that's really powerful. So the, the, power, the, the power of asking the right questions. The right questions. And, and it making might, it constructive yeah, together. Yeah, and it helps the other person as well. You know, if 
this person has just gone through something traumatic, um, like a tsunami, you know, and mm-hmm. she's lost everything. To keep questioning in a victim mode doesn't help that person in her own healing journey, you know what I mean? You just keep them in that sort of victim right. mode. Right. But as a journalist, you know, what they should do is ask sort of, uh, so what have you learned from all this experience? Um, what do you hope for the future? You know, stuff like How just really positive, yeah, or or just to have a more positive outlook rather than being so fixated on, you know, oh my God, what have I lost? Mm-hmm. But what else have you gained? That's powerful. Yeah. Uh-huh. But there, there's also another school of saying that hey, you can't you can't positive your way into success. You know, there, there is a real world out there yeah. whereby you can't will yourself into getting a car park. Although there are certain... Uh, like the secret. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Um, you know, how, how important is it and how important is it to discern, you know, when to be positive, when not to? Or should you always be uh, positive all the time? It's hard to do, theoretically, right? It's hard to be positive all the time. Mm-hmm. But I do find that, you know... Even the little thing. So you're driving on the road, somebody cuts you off, and instinctively you yell something, right? Mm-hmm. You think, oh, you know, what's wrong with him? Mm-hmm. And sometimes you hang on to that emotion until you're off the roundabout, yeah. and then you go home and you tell somebody about it. <laughs> so that feeling just festers in you, and if you think yeah. about it, why? Yeah. Maybe that person had a bad day and was distracted in that one second. We all get distracted. Yeah. So the whole point is, you know, in that moment, I see the relevance of it, right? Because mm-hmm. Why hang on to a, such a negative emotion right. when you can easily say, well, maybe that person had a bad day and was not focusing. That's okay. So it's about it. having good EQ as well? Yeah, let it go. I think it's about oops, let it go. So how has this course helped strengthen your parenting skill? So when uh, three-year-olds, uh-huh. they ask a lot of questions. They throw a lot of tantrums too. Yeah, <laughs> and sometimes <laughs> it's, you know, it, gets, it gets on your nerves, right? Yeah. It helps me in the sense... I pause more. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you're less reactive? Yeah, I used to go, oh, I just lash out, right? Because <laughs> it's annoying sometimes. But I pause and I uh-huh. think, okay. Uh, why? Yeah. If I were to say what uh-huh. I'm about to say, what good will come of it? Right. Yeah. And how does a parent, how, how does one teach their kids to be more positive? How, how, what do you apply to it? Um, how do I teach? Or is it something conscious, or you're just doing it subliminally? So what I've learned to ask my son now, when I see him, when I pick him up from school, I oh. always say, I'm very happy to see you. Yeah. Instead of quickly jumping to, how was your day? Uh-huh. Um, so I'm, I'm really happy to see you. Right. And they say that kids really love to hear that, right? So, And then my second question is always, so Jamie, what went well today? And I try to ask my nieces and nephews that now instead so of positive questions. Yeah, what went well today? Uh-huh. Yeah, instead of instead of who bullied you. Oh, like how was your day? Uh huh. And they go fine. Right. But the whole point of what went well is to get them to think about, oh, actually, what did go well? Uh huh. Yeah, rather than the stuff that maybe didn't go so well or maybe was a bit uneventful, but something must have gone well. And it's just to appreciate that it went and, well. And does he come up with good answers? He's only three. <laughs> so he says, I had fun. <laughs> I, did, I took a dive. <laughs> oh, okay, good enough. <laughs> we have websites like Coursera. There's Linda from LinkedIn. Um, there's Udemy. Uh-huh. There's heaps of these um, websites that you can either pay a subscription fee to or pay per course. Uh-huh. You can learn anything under the sun. So what, what were some of the courses that you've undergone? Uh, so positive psychology. Uh, recently, I signed up to do modern marketing with Seth Godin, thanks wow. to you. <laughs> and then I also signed up, I haven't started, but I paid to do a financial planning course. Right. Yeah, Because I think I'm not so financially savvy. <laughs> And I need to be a bit better at that. Uh-huh. Yeah, so those are the three that I've done, I think. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's flexible, right? Uh-huh. Um, so you learn at your own pace. Right. And you can keep listening to it over and over again. So there are certain concepts that come up that's new to me and I don't get it immediately. So you repeat. I can repeat and I can turn on the subtitles. Uh-huh. Right, so I can read and listen to it at the same time. And as I'm learning things, I can also Google it at the same time, right? Uh, so that's what I like about it. 
Um, so how would you compare it to traditional learning, going to a class? Um, I think with traditional learning, it's not really at your own pace, right? Because there are certain modules that you have to deliver at a certain period of time. You're in a bigger forum, I presume. Um, some people may like the fact that you are in a room and you're just there to learn. Mm -hmm. uh, for that hour, you're going to learn. So with me, with online learning, mm -hmm. um, 20 minutes into it, I could get distracted. Right. Then I just pause. I just go off and do my own thing. Right? Whereas traditionally, if you're in a classroom, no. For, the, for that one hour, you're sitting in there. Right. So even if your mind wanders, uh -huh. you have no choice but to, to be physically there, right? But do you instill any level of discipline to make sure that you complete the course or you don't waste money? Yeah, I do. So um, so they have set targets, right? They said that this, this module will take you two weeks to complete. Uh -huh. um, I try to do it within like half the time. I try to do it with half the time, and I'm becoming a lot more structured in the sense where I've got a, a planner now, right? So I sort of pencil in uh -huh. when I'm going to do some learning. Right. Uh, that way, when I see it written down, I somehow commit to myself that I have to sit and learn. Mm -hmm. So there are forums there. Uh -huh. There are forums, and what's good about Coursera, uh, I'm not sure about the other ones, is that as the guy is lecturing, it pauses halfway, and then it prompts you with a question. To say, Martin Seligman just introduced this concept. Uh -huh. What's your key takeaway from this concept? Right. And you have to type it in, and everyone can see it. Yeah. That's scary. Yeah. So it's optional, though, it's up to you. It's optional. Uh -huh. <laughs> but it's good, right? You reflect. Uh -huh. And then I think, okay, done. Then it continues to the next lecture. So it's almost like you are, you're in a real classroom. It, yeah, it feels like it. Uh -huh. um, and you spoke about having a forum. That means people all over the world are participating. Yeah bring me to that experience? I felt quite vulnerable, actually. I thought, man, if somebody else were to see my name on Coursera, they're going to know my deepest, darkest thoughts, right? Because a lot of <laughs> positive psychology is about reflecting, right. uh, reflecting on what you've just learned, on how that may impact your life. Mm -hmm. So I must admit that in some of the forums, I held back a bit on what I said for fear that in the future you never know <laughs> somebody might google you and they think oh okay that's how she thinks um, but I like it because it's also peer to peer assessed uh -huh. just like the material that you shared with me right. so for me it's some of the other participants are very open and honest about their struggles and so I value the honesty of some of the folks that are participating in it mm -hmm. and I feel like you know, some of the things that they say resonate with me too. And I think, well, I'm not alone in this, right? In the way I think. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes I think, am I the only one who thinks this certain way? Um, but you see that you're not. The world is huge. And everybody goes through their own battles. Um, so I Do like that. Do you make that. friends out of these forums? No. Right. No. It's you're not, not that interactive. To... Uh, I think it's a very individual mm -hmm. experience type right. thing. I wouldn't actually use that too. Would you, would you have any, uh, any gauge of the demographic of people? Are they mainly from the US or are they from the, the students who, who attend those I think those it's glo it pretty global because uh -huh. um, before you do the, the peer assessment, there's uh -huh. a bit of a disclaimer to say, you know, when you give your comments, just be wary that some of the participants are not from native English-speaking countries. Right. So do not penalize them on that fact. Okay. Um, and I've seen some of the feedback. It's pretty much, it's quite spread out. Okay. Yeah, it's so accessible now. I think it's amazing that you can learn mm -hmm. anything. So the landscape of education has shifted? It has, tre okay. tremendously. And I think like you, you're also a lifelong learner, right? I try to be. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, I, I tell my dad this, because I've read so many articles about how the things change so rapidly that we constantly have to reinvent ourselves mm -hmm. to stay relevant. So me doing this is a challenge to see how relevant I can still be. You know, I don't want I don't always want to be known as an oil and gas person. Mm -hmm. I want to see if, you know, if you put me in a completely different industry, would I be able to make it? Right. Cuz then that tells me that I'm relevant, right? I'm not just a one trick pony. The fact that I'm half Dusun, half Chinese, and growing up, um, 
I felt like the kids around me didn't understand what that meant. Like, you're Dusun, but you're Chinese. You look Chinese. It's the whole identity. Mm -hmm. um, people challenging what my identity was and having um, stereotypical views of what it means to be indigenous in Brunei at that time. Right. Right? So at that time... So, so it was not easy? It was not easy. I think people thought that to be Dusun meant that you came from the kampong, uh -huh. um, that you couldn't really speak English so well. And, you know, as a child growing up and you have, you know, boys, boys can be bullies, right? And they would say things to you. It, it really impacted me a lot. Um, so I saw so the, the inferiority complex. Yeah, of being different in a way, uh -huh. even though I, I'm like, I'm not different. How, how different am I? Right. But because there's a collective of boys that uh -huh. thought that way. Just um, boys? It was boys, it was just boys. <laughs> the girls were very understanding. They were my friends. But the boys were the ones that made my life difficult mm. growing up, uh -huh. yeah. Um, so the sense of proving to the boys that, hey, you know, you can do, so can I. Yeah, well, to, to prove to them that that doesn't define me, mm -hmm. because I let it get to me so much as a kid, right? Mm -hmm. And I felt that I just wanted to prove to mm -hmm. everyone that this half to soon half Chinese girl mm -hmm. can make it just as far as anyone else. Right. And, and is uh, being too soon as a heritage something to be proud of? Yes. Right. Very much so. Mm -hmm. yeah. any, any stories or anything that you can share with me? about the Dusun culture? My father grew up from a very, very poor family. Mm -hmm. um, so poor that he said he would have to share a tiny fish amongst his you know, six siblings. And it was just stories of hardship mm -hmm. that I grew up hearing. And we would go back to Lamunin right. um, uh, every other week or during the school holidays, we would spend our time there. And it's just so different from living in Bandar. The toilet, Is it a long house kind of thing? No, no? it was just a wooden house right. on its own. But my grandmother, my nene, used to live in uh, this, um, yeah, this old wooden house. The toilet was detached from the main house. It was downstairs. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, at that time, I didn't really appreciate it for what it was. I actually felt really uncomfortable being in that situation. No aircon. Mm -hmm. um, but what I did feel was a big sense of community. Right. Um, yeah, a strong sense of community and um, yeah, it's, I don't know how to explain it. People I, are nicer, uh, more simple? It's a simple life. Uh -huh. It's definitely a, a, a simple life. Food was simpler. Um, good food? Yeah, good food. It's like typical Malay type of meals. Oh, okay. um, but, you know, TV, we had a TV, but that was nothing. We didn't really do much. It was a lot more of playing so around, running around. Very much in touch with nature. It's beautiful. For sure. How, how much of this is still being preserved? Because I, I go to long house nowadays, see kids holding on to the phone, ignoring the world. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's eroding. <laughs> and actually, I'm ashamed, right? I'm half too soon, but I can't speak the language. Right. Yeah, so... I think that's one my one regret, and I said it to my dad a few weeks ago. I said, Pa, you know what? I really regret not speaking Dusun. We spoke Malay in mm -hmm. Kampong, but not Dusun. And I was like, why is that, Pa? And then my father said, I'm not sure. You know, even he said his own Dusun is not that great. How similar is it to the Malay language? Or um, is it totally different? It's different.